Petrified Forest is the name of this unique and remarkable landscape that originated several hundred million years ago. Stone is the most prevalent feature in this impressive national park that is located in the state of Arizona. The park lies south of a reservation that accommodates Navajo Indians. This region owes its name to the park's main attraction, a rare and natural phenomenon that has transformed wood into stone. These long rocks are reminiscent of fallen trees. In fact, they are ancient formations of stone. But how could wood possibly be turned into stone? Long ago, this landscape was covered by a dense forest. Mighty rivers cut across the terrain. Water caused by heavy flooding forced dead trees to float to a low-lying swampland. In the deep quagmire of the swamp, and having, in effect, been hermetically sealed, the trees were subsequently covered by layers of sediment. Thus, their further decomposition was halted. As the trees piled deeper and deeper into the swamp, the petrification process began. Mud, sand and volcanic ash settled above the trees that gradually absorbed minerals from the surrounding moisture. Thus, hundreds of fossil trunks developed that today are scattered across the prairie. The large percentage of silicon in the groundwater delayed the natural decaying process and at the same time created the amazing transformation of the trees. Today, the petrified forests, formerly tall conifers, are the most common examples of this stone world of plants that dates back to prehistory.
numerous colours of the pure quartz and various other varieties of these stone trees are quite remarkable and are in stark contrast to the bright blue of the mostly cloudless sky. Most impressive is the millions of years old geological phenomenon of the stone forest in the southern region that is situated only two kilometers from the entrance to the national park. In the Long Logs area that is located close to giant logs, there are hundreds of thousands of fossilized wood specimens that lie in close proximity with one another. In this isolated area that is known as the Badlands, there is little vegetation and it is therefore quite unusual to encounter any form of wildlife. The park's main feature is the unique and fascinating world of stone and its rich array of colourful, red, shimmering minerals. More than 200 million years ago, this swampy area was home to numerous dinosaurs. In the course of time, Scientists have discovered an increasing number of their fossilized remains. Since the beginning of the 1980s, important research has been undertaken within the National Park. The petrified forest covers an area of around 378 square kilometers. And in almost every part of this nature reserve, a huge variety of remarkable fossilized plants and animals has been discovered. In addition to the bizarre scattered fragments of petrified trees, tall and picturesque walls of sandstone are also a feature of the park. Here, the many colored layers of sediment are particularly beautiful. Owing to continuous erosion, scientists are optimistic 
that they will make further important discoveries in the future. But the relatively recent history of this country is also a challenge for the scientist. Traces of human life that dates back almost 2,000 years have also been found here. Generally speaking, to see it at its finest, the best time to visit the park is between the months of October and June. Today's petrified forest was first mentioned in 1852 it was included in a report by the former US Lieutenant Lorenzo Sitgreaves and for some years there was little interest in this region. But a little later those who travelled across this area in the second half of the 19th century began to take an interest in the shiny coloured stones and many took them home as souvenirs. The collecting of the fossilised wood quickly developed into a leisure activity and also into quite a profitable business. At the end of the 19th century, a railroad was constructed in this region. With this, a large number of settlers and successful businessmen were able to travel with ease to the northeast of Arizona. Of course, no one knows how much of the petrified wood found its way into decorative art forms that were sold for profit. But there is no doubt that it was a veritable mini-industry. Because of the increasing abuse of this region's precious natural treasures, in 1906 the American government designated this area as a national monument and thus afforded it all due protection. In 1932 this was extended to the northern section of the park. Thirty years later the earlier Chalcedony Park eventually became what is known today as the Petrified Forest National Park.
After travelling northward along a 46-kilometre highway, suddenly the massive remains of a huge sandstone formation towers high above. The flat tops rise up in front of the lengthy Puerco Ridge. Majestically emerging from the depths of the landscape, they can be seen from a great distance. Most of the hiking paths in the park are short tracks that run parallel with the main highway. On Crystal Forest Trail, the devastation caused by 19th century souvenir hunters is plain to see. A one kilometre path passes by numerous petrified tree trunks that contain great cracks and huge hollows. Younger scars in the stone. Greedy tradesmen once created jewellery from the precious quartz stone and as a consequence caused great damage to the fossils. Since then, good policing, organised by the park's administrators, has ensured that the remaining stones are well protected. In recent times, the vigilant eyes of the law have managed to curtail the amount of theft within the petrified forest. However, souvenirs are still very much in demand. In the visitor's centre, it is possible to purchase small stones from other areas. Here, dealers with special state-controlled concessions offer these fossils for sale. Illuminated by the sunlight, the petrified tree trunks and their glossy red appearance have always been the subject of fantasy and imagination. According to one of the legends of the Navajo Indians, the branches of the petrified trees represent the huge bones of a legendary giant called Yetzel. The Paiuti tribe was convinced that these stones were the massive broken arrows that belonged to their mighty god of thunder. The 
largest examples of fossilized wood in the National Park indicate that in prehistoric times, many of the trees grew to a height of 60 meters. Today, it is difficult to believe that this dry, stony, desert-like landscape was once part of a large jungle-like river area that contained a rich abundance of animals and plants. From the top of a rock in Jasper Forest, Approximately half a kilometer from the highway, there's a wonderful panoramic view. From this vantage point, the many colours of the stone strata are particularly striking. Around 65 million years ago, a great geological transformation took place on the North American continent. Mighty cracks and chasms in the earth, the rocky mountains developed. And at the same time, something else happened in the rocky landscape of Arizona. Trees that had been buried in the 100 million year old sediment were forced 1600 meters upwards. The trunk of this petrified tree is like a natural bridge, both ends of which are linked by sandstone. Some years ago, the Achat Bridge was in danger of collapsing. Now, it is supported by concrete. On the border of the main highway that travels both north and south, there are several parking places that have magnificent views across the fascinating rock and desert landscape. There are a total of six petrified forests within the National Park. 
The majority of them are in the southern part that is known as Rainbow Forest. More than anything else, it is the spectacular and varied colours of the stones with their numerous red tones that constantly fascinate those who experience them in this unique setting. The mainly red appearance of the sand strata is caused by the numerous variations and combinations of minerals that are present. The individual stone segments seem to cling to the rocky slopes like dark red ribbons, a feature of the landscape that is particularly attractive. The almost 300 metre thick Chinle formations that are composed of sandstone and slate contain the vast majority of the petrified wood. Until now, some of the world's oldest fossilised dinosaur remains have been discovered within the petrified forest. It is only a matter of time when, thanks to gradual erosion, further spectacular remains will be discovered. Scientists will then be able to add to their existing wealth of knowledge with regard to the fascinating age of dinosaurs. In 1984, a previously unknown dinosaur was discovered. It was given the rather endearing nickname Gertie. Paleontologists have not yet managed to link it to any known species of dinosaur. Unlike the mysterious dinosaur Gertie, geological knowledge concerning the origin of these noble rock formations is considerably extensive. However, it is not only the skeletons of immense prehistoric reptiles or the park's renowned fossilised conifers that have been preserved by petrifaction.
plants that date back to prehistoric times, and also fish and insects such as cockroaches have also been well preserved. It is believed that most of the fossils from this region date back to the late Trias, an epoch that goes back more than 200 million years. Colorado Plateau and today's northeastern region of Arizona was located closer to the equator on the gigantic supercontinent of Pangaea. More recent remains of petrified bracken and alligator-like creatures such as the pitosaurs are strong indications of this region's early equatorial and thus tropical geographical location. A period of millions of years, the swampy area of the jungle completely dried out, and now the steep slopes of the painted desert are an amazing sight. Looking similar to the tents used by the native Indians, a row of stone peaks and neighbouring vantage point was named the teepees. Different coloured stone layers that are found in the National Park have been subjected to various stages of erosion. In areas of lush vegetation, this natural process has been at a slow pace. In addition to the petrified forests, the Blue Mesa Loop Trails, which are the paths that surround the so-called Blue Timbers, are an important part of any journey through the impressive landscape of the petrified forest. Various picturesque layers of rock reach into the sky, but it is particularly in the evening during dusk, when the day slowly comes to an end, that the colours of the stone, illuminated by the setting sun, are at their most striking. In addition to various natural light conditions, it is the varying quantities of iron oxide that are responsible for the red colours and tones of the rock.
When considering the fantastic colours and formations of this magnificent natural landscape, the term Badlands is somewhat misleading. The history of the National Park settlement can be traced back more than 2,000 years. Scattered over almost the entire nature reserve, the oldest traces lead to a race of nomads. It is unknown when the nomads arrived and established a village-like community here. The largest settlement is the Puerco Pueblo. This village was inhabited by the Anasazi Indians between the 12th and 15th centuries and is situated only two kilometers from what is known as Newspaper Rock. At one time, this rock was decorated with numerous ancient symbols, or petroglyphs. However, the exact meaning of these illustrations is still a mystery. There are around 300 archaeological sites in the park, ranging from small discoveries that have uncovered items of clay to the incredible Pueblo dwellings of the Anasazi. At the beginning of the 15th century, the Anasazi tribe moved to New Mexico. Approximately 10 kilometers north of Puerco Ruin, at the top of Lacey Point Overlook, the powerful red of the painted desert welcomes those who come here. The hot and shining landscape of this rocky desert is extensive and it contains a number of easy to reach vantage points that offer good views of the intriguing terrain. Rushing clouds sail above the desolate land and cast their shadows onto its red stone. They create a natural, dramatic effect of breathtaking beauty. The name Painted Desert relates to the typical rainbow-coloured sedimentary layers that extend through the hills and rocky walls. The sight of these spectacular images, created by natural light and shade, is totally mesmerizing. Their magnetic allure making it difficult to leave for the next vantage point.
with permission from the park ranger at Kachina Point. It's possible to leave the panoramic highway and progress on foot to explore the desert at closer quarters. Whether travelling from Whipple, Nijoni or Pintado Point, there are the most varied, colourful and often surprising impressions of the landscape waiting to be discovered. Approximately 250 kilometres in length, the relatively narrow confines of the Painted Desert meet with the area of the Grand Canyon. The powerful red rocks of the desert glow in the heat of the day. The impression of the resultant bright colours is intense. Last million years, nature has created an overwhelming and dramatic landscape. However, the development of this terrain is a living thing. As both wind and weather continue to erode the stone layers, hidden fossils in the deeper sediment are gradually revealed. Petrified Forest National Park combines the majestic brilliance of its petrifaction with the rugged beauty of the colourful desert. It is, without doubt, a unique masterpiece of nature.